Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isn't that beautiful? When we walk in the spirit, how quickly the healings begin to take place. And that's what the Lord wants to teach us. If you are able to write these truths, please write it down. Because this is what, when you practice it in your everyday life, is going to turn your journey into victory. My life is a production of my thoughts. Every day, every moment, I have thoughts. And thoughts have to be captivated. If I do not captivate those thoughts, then those thoughts will have power over me. Take me into the flesh and destroy my future. And that's what the Lord wants to tell us. That those who walk in the spirit, those who renew their mind, change their thinking, at once their life is filled with supernatural. We just now saw there were people with 15 years did not touch any one of them. But just the words. Words have power to change physical things. Because God created the world by His word. I'll give you an example. We run a rehab center for the alcoholics and drug addicts. And uh, these drug addicts and alcoholics, when they come, they are not just Alcoholics, they are alcoholics and drug addicts for years, 30 years, 40 years. Now we know that when alcohol or drugs are strong, suddenly the body will react. But here is how we fight and deliver them. Romans chapter 1, verse 16. <coughs> Romans 1, 16. Paul is saying, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who <coughs> believes. <coughs> so when these alcoholics, drug addicts come to the center, our job is to make them believe in the gospel of Christ. That's why Jesus never said, go and lay hands on the sick and heal them. He said, first, preach the gospel. What is so special about preaching the gospel? When the gospel is preached, the preacher makes the person understand that you are believing from your senses. You are believing the things that you can see. But when you start believing Jesus, you have to believe his word. And when you believe his word, there are no physical evidence. Our life is governed by physical evidence. And the gospel is governed by spiritual evidence. So there is going to be a shift from the natural to the spiritual. And when we make those people who come, the boys who come to the center, to teach them the word of God and make them change their thinking from the natural to the spiritual, the power of God gets activated, bringing salvation. The word salvation means total healing, total health, total prosperity, total uh, preservation, total uh, peace, total protection. The whole total, the whole package is called a salvation. And a person receives salvation by praying. A person can be praying from morning to evening, but still not believing. Because his praying is based on things seen. And as long as the praying is based on things seen, he has not yet tapped into God's power. But the moment the person shifts from seen to unseen, the power of God gets activated and the result is supernatural. Praise God. So I will show you the formula by which we destroy alcohol and drugs. Give me Proverbs 18.21. Proverbs 
Please read that. Then at last, I the power to talk, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So if we are able to make them open their mouth and speak God's promises for one hour, out of the mouth came what? God's word or their own words? God's word or their weaknesses? God's word or their problems? God's word or their stress? So if for one hour, the word of God came out of their mouth. So what is activated in their life now? Death or life? What life? Supernatural life. God kind of life. So when they are opening their mouth and speaking it, along with all the other brothers who are there in the center, the power of God gets activated in their life. And this goes on throughout the day. They come out of alcohol without withdrawals. They come out of drugs without withdrawals. None of them are locked up in the room. It's all free and open. Now in the center, if they are out on the ground, there are speakers that keep speaking, preaching the word of God. If they are in the washroom having bath, there is a speaker that speaks the word of God. If they are sitting for dinner, there is a speaker speaking the word of God. Anywhere in the compound they go, 24 hours 7, the preaching of the word of God is on. What happens? Even if they don't want to listen to anything, their minds are drawn towards the word of God. And that's how they are delivered from alcohol and drugs. If a person from alcohol and drugs can be delivered, can you and I be delivered from any kind of weakness, any kind of addiction? Yes. What's the formula? Speak with your mouth continually because God has created man in such a way when he repeats something continually, he begins to believe what he speaks. Because words coming out of my mouth activates the spiritual world. It changes my thinking. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Did Jesus attack the devil by speaking the written word of God or did he just keep his mouth shut? He spoke God's word. So Jesus had to attack the devil by speaking God's word. And the Bible says the devil fleed from him. How much more you and I got to learn to speak God's word because God's word will always produce God kind of thoughts. And God kind of thoughts will give you God kind of emotions. And God kind of emotions will give you God kind of decisions and actions and habits and character. It all starts from a seed called the word of God. Can you get from the Amplified Proverbs 18, 14 from the Amplified? You got amplified? Fourteen. Eighteen fourteen. Oh, he who finds a wife. The strong spirit of a man, the strong spirit of a man sustains him in bodily pain or trouble, but a weak and broken spirit who can raise up or bear. We have a spirit. Now please understand, you and I have a body, right? And in this body lives a spirit that has a soul that can think, feel and choose. Now just as my body needs physical food and when I eat physical food, my body changes the physical food into energy and that energy is used and when that energy is being used it starts diminishing and I need fuel to create more energy and therefore I eat food again. Is that right? In the same way my spirit is strong 
or weak or broken. When I feel my spirit with the word of God, my spirit becomes strong and when my spirit is strong, it can sustain in any kind of bodily pain or trouble. A person can get cancer and a strong spirit of a man can kill cancer in no time. But a person can have cancer and the whole day think about cancer, his spirit is weak, his spirit is broken, nobody can raise him up, nobody can bear him, he is already defeated, he is a victim. So do I need to uh, feed my spirit every day with the word of God? Yes. And if I feed my spirit with the word of God on a daily basis, now when the enemy comes to attack me, I'm already well equipped to fight back and get my victory. Amen. Amen. So the more and more I feed my spirit, what, what, what is the, how do I know my spirit is weak or strong? The moment I'm stressed out, the moment I'm, I'm nervous, the moment I'm filled with fear, the moment I'm with unbelief, it clearly is an indication that I've got a weak spirit. Now a small trouble can kill me. A, strong, a small trouble can get me into offense, bitterness, anger, and destroy my marriage, destroy my children, destroy my finances, destroy my job, and destroy my future. Just as I need to eat food on a daily basis, I need to eat the word of God on a daily basis. When a person's spirit is strong, even though he sees things with his natural eyes, he responds not through the natural eyes, he responds according to the spirit. And therefore, he is always walking in the spirit. His attitude is extremely calm, he is extremely joyful, he is extremely peaceful, even in the midst of storm. Now let me give you an example. We know that Jesus, after sowing, after, after teaching on the parable of sowing and reaping, the sower and the seed, he told the disciples, let us go to the other side. And the disciples got into the ship, they, put, they took Jesus along, and they were going on to the other side. And suddenly there was a storm, you remember? And when the storm came, the wind came and beat on the ship. And the waves came and beat on the ship, and the ship began to uh, be filled with water. Where was Jesus? Sleeping. And the disciples tried their best to get the boat to the shore and they could not and they went and woke Jesus up and said these words, Do you not care we are perishing? Do you not care we are perishing? My question to you is, in the midst of those words, was their spirit strong or weak? Why were they weak? Because they were focused on the storm or what Jesus said. Jesus said, let us go to the other side. If Jesus said, let us go to the other side, then Jesus is saying, I am responsible to take you to the other side only if you are willing to agree with me. Now, were they agreeing with Jesus' words or were they agreeing with the storm? So when they were agreeing with the storm and they woke Jesus up, their, their spirit was already weak and broken and out of their mouth came extreme fear saying, Lord, do you not care that we perish? Now, was Jesus also in the same boat? Yes, yes. How did Jesus respond to the storm? He opened his mouth and spoke to the storm and said, Be still, be at peace, be calm. Then what did he say to the disciples? He said, Why are you so fearful? Where is your faith? What did he mean by that? Why are you so fearful? Where is your faith? Sorry? What did he mean by that? So what was Jesus' meaning about where is your faith? He said, did you watch me how I calm the storm? I opened my mouth and I spoke the word, but when I spoke the word, I released 
faith, I released authority. And when I used faith, and faith went and stopped the storm, I told you that same kind of faith, the same kind of word, the same kind of anointing, the same Holy Spirit is with you, but you did not open your mouth and speak to the storm, but you were filling yourself. You, you were filling yourself with worry and was stretched out and opened the mouth and spoke against my words. So if my friend, if you are going through some tragedy in the storm, the reason is you are afraid to use your faith. Nowhere in the Bible you find Jesus saying, go in peace, I've healed you. Nowhere. Everywhere he's saying, your faith has healed you. So is there going to be a fight between faith and fear inside you? Yeah. With the same mouth that I open my mouth and I speak with confidence, my fear, if that same mouth is trained to speak the words of faith, you will get extreme great results. Are we all assigned by God and given the authority to speak faith? Yeah. But instead of speaking faith, we keep on speaking all the negative things based on our senses because our spirit is extremely weak. The spirit has no power to fight against our mind that is communicating to us based on senses. But a person who is feeding his spirit on a daily basis the word of God and then he looks at the storm, he quickly opens his mouth and rebukes the storm and the storm has to submit to his faith. Are you following? Yeah. Yeah. But who is responsible? I am responsible. So do I need to feed my spirit? Or do I need to go to every preacher in town and tell him, keep me in prayer? But somebody keeping you in prayer, your spirit doesn't get strong. Can you go and tell your preacher, some preacher, and say, keep me in prayer that I, uh, that, 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 that even though I don't eat food, you keep me in prayer and you pray for me and my stomach will be full. Can you go and tell your uh, somebody, uh, you eat my food and my stomach gets full? Do I need to eat food? So in the same way, do I need to feed my spirit? So what is the preacher's job? The preacher's job is to make you understand the truth. The preacher's job is to give you a jump start and show you how it works. Did it work? Now my question to you is, am I confident in what I'm speaking? That's why I can call you out. Now when, I, when will a person be confident? When his spirit is strong. He knows that the words that I speak out of my mouth are not just empty words, they, they are words that will not come back empty because it's mixed with faith. Now, has God given you the same Holy Spirit? Yes. Has He given you the same word? Yes. Has He given you the same anointing? Yes. But have you been feeding your spirit? No. Let's say everybody has got the same food, but will everybody be of the same weight? No. Some will eat more, some will eat less. How do you think I eat? Do I eat more? Hello. If I say I've been starving for the last three months, how many of you would believe that? <laughs> Hallelujah. Might be somebody might be saying he's overeating. When you overeat, your body becomes sick. But praise God, when you overeat, the word of God, your spirit will make your soul healthy, your spirit, your, your spirit is healthy, your body is healthy, your relationship is healthy, your finances are healthy, everything is healthy. Praise God. So a strong spirit will bring what? Strong, godly thoughts. Let me give you the proof. Give me Psalms 1, verse 1, 2 and 3. Let me give you some evidence. Of what I'm talking about. Psalms 1, 1, 2, 3. I just got handed over. During my sister was praying, there was a handover. I was in Cork all these days. So Brother Amal went 
the next brother came to take over. Praise God. He was there with me for the first week from Tulam. So he took me all around. Then at one place he handed me over to Amal. Amal finished his mission. He went back home. So now I'm handed over here. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And I thank God that God has given me amazing people in my life. People who are really selfless to serve God. And that's why we see amazing results in every day in our life. Amen? Amen. Let's, no, 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 not, not amplified. Just let's give you the simple. What's one? What's one? What's one? Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Who is a godly man? Who is a godly man? The one who goes to church. Praise God. Who is a godly man? Who says his prayers every day? Praise God. Who is a godly man? Who says his rosary without faith? Who is a godly man? Sorry? The man who keeps the word of God is a godly man. All of the man might be doing everything else but not keeping the word of God. The Bible calls him an ungodly man. So the Bible says, Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the... How many of you have ever watched TV? Do you watch the talk shows? They give you good counseling. Now that counseling is worldly or worldly. And do you want to hear it? After hearing what do you do? You follow it. And when you follow it and it's not the truth, what will be the result? Disaster. Nor stands in the ways of sinner, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, was true. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law does he meditate day and night. So a person with a strong spirit is the person who delights in the word of God day and night. Then what happens? He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. So what's the secret? For you to be always flourishing. For you to be always healthy, for you to be always fruitful, not only in your life, in your whole family, your whole household. The secret is, are you delighting in the word of God or are you delighting in the world system? He says he brings forth fruit in his season, his leaf shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. Do we all want this package? So what's, oh, what is the Lord saying? Can you get verse number 3 if you don't do verse number 2? Do I need to do verse number 2? Show the verse number 2. What's the verse number 2? He meditates on the word day and night. If I do this, 3 is Guaranteed. So is a Christian life a love game? Or you do two, three is yours? Do they have sales over here? Buy one, take one free? Mm -hmm. They have? Mm -hmm. Buy one, take one free? Mm -hmm. You'll have that system? How does it look? You go to the shop and say, give me free. Hello, give me free. Will he give you? What will he say? Buy one, take one free. Buy one, show the free. Show the free, brother. This is free. Hello, this is free. You don't have to pay for it. It is by default, they give you. But does that work? Verse number two, take labor from your side. 
Yeah. Hallelujah. Put the slide. Slide two. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Do you like that? What service does shall prosper? No, I know that you don't like it. Hallelujah. Your life is a production of thoughts, then if you don't have thoughts of health, prosperity and increase on your mind, you will never have those things in your life. Now did he say whatsoever you ask in prayer, first believe that you have received it and then you shall have it. So if you don't have thoughts that you are in good health, which one comes first? Good health comes first or first thoughts of good health? But what are we doing? First let the good, thought, good health come, then I will say I have got good health. Is the Bible saying that? The Bible says, first you believe and then you will see. What does the world say? First you show me, then I will believe. Is that right? That's right. Hello, is that right? <laughs> so the world is showing you good health or sickness? Sickness. Now you are thinking what? Sickness. Throughout the day what are you thinking? Broken. Problem. Stress. So, will you get any of these things manifested in your life? So, if your central processing unit is not thinking good health, prosperity, increase that comes from God, will you ever be able to bring those things to pass? So, when you are thinking thoughts of good health, prosperity, increase and all these promises, you are like a woman who has become pregnant. And when she goes through the whole process of nine months, then comes the delivery. In the same way, my pregnancy is spiritual. God, you said these words to me. I believe these words. I walk with you in these words. My attitude is what your word says. And now, when a person is pregnant in his thinking, then those things will begin to manifest because man is created in the likeness and image of God. When God saw darkness, he never said there is darkness, he said let there be light. When Jesus saw blind, he never said you are blind, he said receive sight. When Jesus saw leper, he never said you are leper, he said be clean. When Jesus saw paralytic, he never said you are suffering from paralysis, he said rise up, pick up your mat and walk. When he saw death, he never said you are deaf, he said deaf spirit come out. When he saw a man with evil spirit, he did not say I got, he got evil spirit, he said he, un unclean spirit come out. When he saw uh, Jairus' daughter is dead, he never said she is dead, she said she is sleeping. When he saw Lazarus is dead, he did not say he is dead, he said Lazarus come out. Is that right? What do we say? We say exactly opposite to what Jesus did. What I see, I speak. What I feel, I speak. What I hear, I speak. Can you see? These are spiritual laws. When I operate through an opposite law, the result will be opposite. Now, after we leave from this church, Try this, all those who have got a car, put the reverse gear, make a good rosary and then say, Lord, the car shall go in front and see that there is no wall behind. Try that, put the reverse gear, pray and say, in the name of Jesus, car go in front. Will the car go in front? That also they don't know. Oh Jesus. <laughs> I said, if you put a reverse gear, in your car and say the rosary and then you pray in the name of Jesus car go in front. Oh, forward, yeah. Will it go in front? No. Because you put a reverse here. So when your thoughts are of sickness and stress and all, you are on a reverse gear or forward. Yes. So what are you expecting? 
But is it going to go? So is it going to crash all behind? <coughs> Hallelujah. Are you getting it? So are you walking in the flesh or walking in the spirit? Spirit, very good. God bless you. All the oral exams, full marks. But practical real life, all stressed out. Hallelujah. Can we change? Yes. Hello, is it a bingo game or a game of chess? No more bingo game. No more bingo game. It's a game of chess. I learn the strategies from the Bible and I practice it and I can come out victorious. Amen? Amen. Next one. Your thoughts are the plans or blueprint for your life. Has anybody ever committed sin without first having a thought? No. Not possible. So when I have a thought, the thought is the root which will go and produce the fruit. So are thoughts supposed to be captivated? Because if I don't captivate those thoughts, those thoughts can take me on a journey that can destroy my marriage, can destroy everything. So might be you are sitting in the church and you are getting some thoughts and you know and you know that those thoughts are not godly. If I do not captivate those thoughts, those thoughts will multiply and lead me on a journey where I'll find that my action was according to those thoughts. So those thoughts can be captivated by using God's word against it. For example, the, the doctor's report says, I got cancer. So my word will be, Lord, you curse the fig tree and the cancer died in the same way this cancer dies. Lord, I thank you. You dwell in the praises of your people as I'm praising you, Lord. Mountains are melting. This cancer is melting. Lord, we thank you, Lord. You said we do not look at things that are seen, but we look at things that are unseen. Things that are seen are temporary. Things that are unseen are eternal. So, Lord, I thank you that as I keep my eyes fixed on you, the cancer is gone, totally destroyed. Thank you, Lord. Your word says that a good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings out good things. I fill my heart with your scriptures. My spirit is strong and therefore I know that I am bringing good things out of this. Lord, I thank you that your word says that we know that all things work together for good. So I know, Lord, that this will work for my good and not only work for my good, I will be a champion in killing cancer and teach others how to kill cancer. Lord, I thank you that your word in 3 John verse 1 says, that uh, verse 2 says, that uh, when my soul prospers, everything will go well with me and I'll be in good health. So Lord, I'm so excited that I, my soul is prospering because I'm renewing my mind with your word and this cancer will turn into victory. Now what am I doing? My thoughts are aligned with the promises of God. Now, am I a victor or a victor? How many of you want God to give you victory? Come on, raise your hands, please. After preaching for one and a half hour, again, they're saying the same thing. Yeah, you don't understand my questions. But if I have to ask you, brother, are you a boy or a girl? What would you say? No, I'm asking you a simple question. Are you a man or a woman? I think so, you're a woman. <laughs> now, even though I say a hundred times, will you change your answer? No, because you know it. In the same way, the words of God has to be known. Don't tell me, you confuse me with the question. When you know the truth, even from your sleep, if somebody has to wake you up, you'll say, no, God doesn't give me victory. My faith gives me victory. 1 John 5, 4, just put it, so that it, it is clear to them. And the day you begin to realize that it is my faith that gives me victory. So if I'm being beaten up and I'm, I'm, I've been all the time failing in one area, it's because my faith is weak in that area. Look at this. For whatsoever is born of God, O comes the world. And this is the victory that O comes the world. Who? Who? So who's going to give you victory? Our faith. But all this time, what are you praying to God? 
And when you're praying to God and say, God, give me victory, he's saying, I can't give you. I gave you my word. God, heal me. I can't heal you. Why, Lord? Because when I was in flesh and blood, I could do that. Because that was my authority. That was my office. But I got now transferred to heaven. And I'm seated at the right hand of God. Now my office is not to heal you. My office is to pray for you. So who is supposed to heal me? I am supposed to heal myself. Because he has declared by his stripes I am healed. Who is going to heal me? Did Jesus say your faith has healed you? So who is supposed to heal me? But what did the devil say? God's going to heal And that's why you are looking towards God. And God is saying don't look at me. Look at what I have given you the scripture. Align your mind to that. Speak it. Believe it. Act on it. Live it. You get the victory. Is there going to be a fight? Hello. Are, are you Christians? Yes. So are you going to be violent? Yes. Look at her. Look at your neighbor. She's saying she's violent. Violent. Aggressive. Hostile. Look at her. Just next bit. She, are you going to be hostile? Did you hear what she said? Yes. And she's in the church. <laughs> Are you a Christian? Yes. And you will be hostile. Yes. Violent. Very violent. Not violent, very violent. Can you see mama? Look at her, look at her. <laughs> <laughs> Is she right or wrong? Right. Is she right or wrong? Then why are you saying, are you going to be wild? Don't go on the looks, sister. <laughs> <laughs> the looks are looks. When the storm comes, the looks doesn't help. <laughs> when the storm comes, what is inside comes out. Praise God. Now why is she saying she will be violent? Because she knows the scripture. Is that right? Yes, sir. What's the scripture? Forget the number. What's the scripture? Well, I know exactly she were But you know you are supposed to be violent. Yes, okay. Give me Matthew 11 to her. So are, are we going to fight against the enemy? Yes. Are we going to ask From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence. And uh, so, Mama, are you going to be wild or very, very calm? So now, when you go home, are you going to be wild with everybody? Don't be wild with everybody, but be wild with the sickness. Otherwise, there will be a complaint. No, no. The preacher came to church and everybody was so calm, everything was going fine. He showed us scripture, the violent take by force, and now everybody started to get violent with one another. No, 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 not with people. Why be violent with the spirits? Hallelujah. 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 Let, let me show you how, how this works. Okay? Can I show you? Okay. How many of you have ever seen? WWF wrestling match. Yeah. You see? You love it? Mm. Okay. Now there's a tag team championship, okay? So I've got a partner who is weak. If I send him inside, the other opponent will bash him up and finish him off. So will I send him first or will I go first? You go. Because if he goes inside and is bashed up and he submits, Along with him, I also lose. Right? So, I will keep him out and I will go in. And if I am stronger than them, I make the opponent submit. Now, will he also get the belt? Yes. But has he gone into the ring? No. But because he's a tag team partner, he also gets a tag. Now, 
When, when, when we read there that whosoever is born of God overcomes the world and this is the victory that overcomes the world, our faith. Now, the Bible teaches us faith works and acts like God. See that? Now, no, there are so many who are sick here. If Jesus was there physical in this body, <laughs> would he touch them and heal them? Yes. Now, even though Jesus is not there, his spirit is there, and the faith is there, and we open the mouth. My sister was singing the hymns. She was speaking words, singing words. Now, the words that she sang activated faith. Now, what did faith do? Faith went and killed every sickness in each person's body. So, is it possible to kill a sickness in a matter of minutes? In the natural? Then why would you wait for 15 years? In the natural, not possible. But with faith, instantly. So faith works how? Faith works like God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And faith works like God and works for you. So instead of me getting into the ring with my flesh, when I'm in the flesh, when I'm worried, who is in the ring? I'm in the ring. Who is not putting? The devil. Will he bash me up? Surely. He will even draw me to a point where I might think of committing suicide. But the same battle, I'm standing outside and I'm speaking the scriptures. Now who's getting into the battle? Faith goes inside. Now will faith give me the victory? Yeah. Yes. So in our battles, who is going inside? We are. You or faith? When you are stressed out, who is inside the ring? When you are worried, who is inside the ring? When you don't know the promises of God, who is in the ring? So most of the time, most of the day, in one day, most of the time, who is in the ring? So who comes home night bashed up? <laughs> now the same person feeds his spirit with the word of God, builds up his faith. Now. Who gets into the ring? And when faith gets into the ring, what will faith do? Faith gives me victory. Are you following? So what's the devil's strategy? To get me into the ring. What's my strategy? To get faith into the ring. Whoever gets into the ring wins. If faith got into the ring, he wins. If fear got into the ring, he also wins. Faith brings goodness. Fear brings extreme destruction. But they are both operating in the same principle, but opposite to each other. Is that clear? Can I continue? Now, is Christian life a fluke game, love game, or a skill game? Skill. So, so my battle in life Depends on who? The devil, God, or me? me? Can I keep the battle going for years? Yes. And can I finish the battle in no time? Yes. If I don't follow God's instruction, will the battle ever get over? No. But if I'm very particular in following God's instruction, can I stop the battle? Yes. Can I still turn it into victory? Yes. Will my season change? Yes. Touch your neighbor and tell your neighbor, your season has begun to change. Your season has begun to change. Good, good. Hallelujah. 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 The truth has set you free. The truth has set you free. Next, next, next. If you want to change your life, I said life, not wife, okay? <laughs> Be careful. Hello? Because many of you don't understand my English clearly. 
I said life, L-I-F-E, not W. If you want to change your life, you must change the way you think. Please don't try to change your action. You can change your action, but you will not find result. Let me give an example. During the Lent season, a person says, I will not drink. And he goes into fasting from alcohol. Okay? As the day closer, comes closer to Easter, how does he come? 10, 9, 8, and when it is two days more, does he wait for Sunday or on Saturday night when he starts? Now, does he take the whole quota of 40 days in one day? So, has he changed his action for 39 days? Yes. But has he changed his thoughts? No. His thoughts are, on Easter Sunday, I will be in the swimming pool of alcohol. <laughs> underwater. Underwater or under, under alcohol? <laughs> so, didn't that change his life? No. So, what changed his life? When I change my thinking. Is that clear? Next. Generational curses such as poverty and sickness in your family will only be broken when you when you change. when you change. change the way you think about them. Now a person can go for hundred healing masks. You mean to say the mass is not a problem? No. The mass is always full of power. But the problem is, after receiving the body and blood, does the person believe that he has been set free? See, our understanding of being set free is more on emotions and evidence. I'll give you my story. When I lost everything and I went into depression, I lost my memory. I could not recognize my wife, my children, my name. And I used to be a person of so much of fear that at the age of 33, I could not take bath with the door closed. So the door has to be open. My wife has to be there. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And during that time, my head used to be going this way the whole day. Whole day. And I was taken to church where the Eucharist is for two and a half hours to three hours. And in this Eucharist, the preaching is for one and a half hour. There is praise, worship, there is rosary, there is healing, everything for two and a half hours to three hours. Laying of hands, everything. So I was taken to this place and the priest laid his hands on me and told my wife, take him home, he is set free. What did he say? It's take him home, he is set free. <clears throat> now when she's taking me back outside the church, my symptoms are still the same. Nothing has changed from outside. What should be her thinking? Did I get healed or did I not get healed? I did not get healed. But when she was taking me home, she continually kept saying, you are set free. The next morning, she taught the children to say the same. So now the children are saying, dad, you are set free. Next day, she takes me to the same place. Again, I receive the body and blood. Again, the word of God. And the next day, the symptom is still the same. What is she saying? You have been set free. Now that is about 45 kilometers from my place. Now please understand, in my country, if you want to travel 8 kilometers, it takes one hour, one and a half hour. Are you with me? Not like a runway over here. Here when I'm on the road, it looks like I'm on an airport runway. Praise God. There, 8 kilometers, 5 kilometers will take one hour. 
Praise God. So you can understand why the distance. Third day, same result. No change. But has she changed the words? No. She still saying the same words. Fifth day, early morning. I call out her name. So when I call out her name, she called, she brought my two daughters and said, Who are these? And I told their names. Then she said, Who are you? What's your name? And I told my name. And she found that my symptom had stopped. Now which one came first? She said first and then the symptom stopped, or symptom stopped and then she said. Which one we practice? That one. In the same way, if you believe and you keep saying there's a general generation curse, which is absolutely wrong because the ancestor curse has been paid in full by Jesus. Just show them Galatians 3, 13 and 14. Unless I change my thinking, that ancestor curse will not be broken. And to change my thinking, I must have spiritual evidence the promise of God. One more time. Galatians 3, 13 and 14. I'm telling you, as he's putting the scriptures, so many demonic forces are screaming and talking to their mothers. Please don't put that. Please don't put that. Because as these truths are received, and you open your mouth and speak it and believe it. All the lies, the stronghold of the enemy is completely destroyed forever. Praise God. Praise God. Galatians 3 13. Christ has redeemed us. Is it is it clearly mentioned? Hello, is it clearly mentioned? Has Christ redeemed us? Yes. So if Christ has redeemed us, what are you saying? Are you still under a curse? If you deliver the goods and I sign the acknowledgement received, received in full, and then I come the next day and say, no, the goods didn't never came to my place. Will you believe when you have got the receipt? Will you agree? Do you have a receipt? Yes. In the same way, do I have a receipt from heaven? Yes. This is not Mr. So and so said. This is Jesus who said. Yes. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree. So when I look at Jesus on the cross with my eyes, he is my savior. But when I look through my spiritual eyes, according to the word of God, he is made a curse for me. So where's my ancestor curse? In the body of Jesus, there on the cross. When I look at Jesus on the cross with my natural eyes, it looks like he lost the battle. Because if there are two fighters fighting in the boxing ring, the one who gets knocked out and he dies, he lost the match. In the same way with my natural eyes, Jesus lost the match. But in my spiritual eyes, I can see that he won the match. How did he win the match? The way Adam lost the match. Adam lost the match by disobedience. Jesus won the match by obedience. So am I looking at Jesus with my natural eyes? then I get nothing. But if I'm looking at Jesus with my spiritual eyes, then all those truths are setting me free. So when does a person receive freedom from curse, freedom from bondage, freedom from fear, freedom from every work of the devil, the moment he has changed his mindset. So what does the gospel do? The gospel changes your thinking, not your emotions. That's why the truth is not an emotion. Faith is not an emotion. It's a document. A document, a promise that God has promised you with evidence not seen. That's faith. And what happens? He has not only really redeemed me from the curse. What's the next line? Look at the next line.
that the blessings of that the blessings of my come unto the Gentiles through are you in Jesus? So where's the blessings of Abraham? Hello, where is the blessings of Abraham? I mean, in us. So are you under generational curse or under Abraham's blessing? But if your thinking says you are under ancestral curse, you will live under the curse. Because the Bible says, as a man thinks, as a man believes, so shall it be. I, I, I want to challenge everybody tonight. If you can take your rosary, and on the rosary beads for one month, say three rosaries of Galatians 3, 13 and 14. Three rosaries of Galatians 3, 13 and 14 are in the place of Hail Mary, say those two scriptures. And I challenge you, in one month you will see amazing supernatural things happening. Why? Because the curse is cancelled. One. Two. The blessings of Abraham are active. Is it very easy? <coughs> yeah. But will you do it? No. The devil will not allow you to do it. Why? Because he knows if you start doing this, he will lose so much of your of, of, of the mess that he has created in your life. How many of you have ever experienced this? When you are just about to sit to study the word of God, you remember so many things. Yes. Or if you are just starting to read the word of God, you will feel so quickly sleepy. Yeah. But if you are watching your favorite program, you will remember nothing. Why do you think the devil is distracting you? Because he knows the more you sit with the word, he has no power. Hallelujah. Next slide. Yeah, next flash, last slide. Last, last, last. If you want to change, we finish this. We finish this. God's ways are the highest ways. God's ways are the highest ways. To walk in His ways, you must discover His thoughts from the Bible. Is God saying, My ways are not your ways? My thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are higher than the heavens. Come on. Yes. How do you find God's ways? How do you find God's thoughts? When you align your thoughts with God's thoughts, you are on high thinking. How are you on the low thinking? When your thoughts align with selfishness, bitterness, envy, jealousy, offense, fight, you are living the most low, cursed, miserable life. So which life are we living? Can you put these two scriptures? Let me close down. Isaiah 55, 7 and 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. What are our thoughts? Corrupted. What are God's thoughts? Extremely holy and pure. What are God's ways? Godly. What are our ways? The shortest way. Easiest way? The comfortable way. Hallelujah. Because our thinking is anything that is uncomfortable cannot come from God. But if you read the Bible, all those heroes in the Bible, they had the most uncomfortable ways, including Mother Mary. She had the most uncomfortable ways, but in the midst of all those uncomfortable ways, their thoughts still stuck to God's word. So how do you know you are living the high life or the low life? When your thoughts align with God's word, your life is always high. When your, when your thoughts don't align with God's word, you are living the most low, miserable, defeated life. How do you know you are on a highway? Check out. Is that what God's, thoughts, God's word says? You are on a highway. How do you know you are in a desert? Check out. Are God's ways, or what God has said, if you are not following that, you are going to end up in a desert. 
नाइन आई सेड सेवन एंड एट नो फॉर सेवन लेट द विकेट फोसेट हिज वे एंड द अनराइटेस मैन हिज थॉट्स एंड लेट हिम रिटर्न टू द लॉ he will have mercy upon him and to a god for he will abundantly pardon so is god saying if you have made mistake you will live a miserable life no he says even if you have made mistake come to me repent and i will change you i will forgive you you know best part of god is he never looks at a past what a past is he says it's nailed on the cross he still gives us a future Do Irish people ever remember people's past? Yes. But why are you laughing? Yes. Something maybe happened at school. Come here, come here, come here, Dan. Come here. Why you laugh so so much? Yeah, tell me. I think you were going to school when you were primary school or something. Something happened that you know you remember instantly, even if it's forty years ago. Yeah. But do people remember other people's past? Oh yes. How? The mother-in-law said something to her when she was just married, so she held it against her. Yeah. Emily, pass. <laughs> I didn't understand. If someone hurt your feelings and you didn't forgive me. And it goes on like a record. If something brings it to mind, the past, something happened. Are happen. you understanding what I'm saying? Yeah. Yes. Isn't it confusing everybody? No. no. Huh? Only you. <laughs> <laughs> Only you. Okay, share something more. They are understanding. No. Give some example. If somebody, shall we say, stole something belonging to your Your lunch money, so to say. You know, always <laughs> think of that when you see the person. Okay. Even after years. Even after years. It's a memory. It's a bad memory. It's called a grudge, like a grudge. He's right. A grudge. He's right. Yes. Yeah. So all that I spoke was not right. <laughs> no. But I, I, but I now understand. The next time, the next time I come to Ireland, I must learn Irish English. Right. Because when he spoke four words, everybody responded. <laughs> when I speak, there's not a word, neither a smile. In fact, when you came, can you see everybody smiling? Yes. The next time I'll preach, I'll keep you at my side. <laughs> So when you are standing here, they smile. Okay, okay. Can you give me some practical example that people keep the bad memory? Ask them. Is there anybody married? Is there anybody married? <laughs> In marriage, are there bad memories? Oh, bad. Yeah. Ask them. Is there any bad memories on your marriage? Something happened that you disagreed with the husband, or the husband you disagreed with your wife? And you think you're going to get anybody cast for that? <laughs> <laughs> what, what is it? You think, you think you're going to get someone to admit that now here? <laughs> Honest man. This man. So, so even though our past is bad. Will God remember it? If if God has not forgiven me, do you think I can stand here with the mic and speak the word? No. Will God manifest His glory? No. But because God is merciful, He forgives our sins and He remembers them no more. Just as God does not remember our sin, God says we also are supposed to pardon others and remember it no more. Hallelujah. 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 Not hold any grudge against anybody. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. So close your eyes. My sister will sing only the chorus before we leave.
about freedom and believe tonight is the night of your freedom. Freedom from generational curse, ancestral curse, bondages, whatever mistakes you have done in the past. This is the time the Lord is saying to you, believe in my word, walk in my word, meditate on my word, and then you are, not you shall be, you are at this very moment a tree planted by the rivers of living water. Your leaves never run dry. You bear fruit in season. And one more powerful promise, whatsoever you do shall prosper. Close your eyes, talk to the Lord and tell the Lord, Lord, I've been so sorry that all my life I've been living in the flesh, not knowing your word, ignorantly walking away from you, rebelling against you, following principles that are not recorded in the Bible. Oh Lord, please have mercy on me. And when I walk out of this place, I'm going out of this place with a changed thinking that you have forgiven me, you are with me, you have anointed me with Abraham's blessings. And from now on, every day, I will confess and believe that Jesus, you were made a curse for me and therefore I, my household, my generations are no more under any kind of curse. We are all anointed with Abraham's blessing so that we are a blessing to others. This is the time of your healing. the blood of Jesus freedom sing it along please freedom to the cross of Jesus the words coming out of your heart is what activates your freedom even though you do not know the sing I'm free from all condemnation free energy and the next one that comes to me and tells me they're going around the country for family tree I, <laughs> I said the next person that comes to me in our prayer group and tells me after listening to you all this time about family tree that they're going for family tree masses I should freedom freedom tree the blood of Jesus come on freedom Freedom through the cross of Jesus. Come on, lift your hands. Freedom. I'm free from all condemnation. Freedom. I'm rescued from Satan's rule. Are ready? Come on. Freedom. Come on, freedom. Freedom through the blood of Jesus. Freedom. Freedom through the cross of Jesus. Come on. Freedom, 
I'm free from all condemnation. Come on. Freedom. Rescued from Satan's rule. Come on. Freedom. Freedom through the blood of Jesus. Freedom. Freedom through the cross of Jesus. Hallelujah. Freedom. Come on. I'm free from all condemnation. Come on. Freedom. I'm rescued from Satan's rule. Come on. Freedom. Come on. Hold on here. Why don't you all sing it? Jesus. That's it. Freedom. Freedom from the cross of Jesus. Freedom. I'm free from all condemnation. Freedom. I'm rescued from Satan's rule. Freedom. I'm free through the blood of Jesus. Come on. Freedom. Freedom through the cross of Jesus. Freedom. I'm free from all condemnation. Freedom. I'm rescued from Satan's rule. Come on. Freedom. Freedom through the blood of Jesus. Freedom. Freedom through the cross of Jesus. Freedom. I'm free from all condemnation. Freedom. I'm rescued from Satan's rule. Freedom. Ye shall freedom. Freedom through the blood of Jesus. Come on. Freedom. Freedom. Freedom through the cross of Jesus. Freedom. I'm free from all condemnation. Freedom. I'm rescued from Satan's room. Thanks, Cameron. And thanks, Brother Johnson. Have a night. Have a night. Give her a round of applause. And to all those friends who helped him, and uh, Amanda was here earlier. I'm sorry, I forget. VJ. 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 And Pat, of course. And they've been all over the country, as you probably know, you've seen the, the notifications. Uh, they've been all over Ireland. Tomorrow's their last day on this particular tour. They're in. Um, not, not tomorrow. 11 o'clock. Uh, 11 o'clock. Anyone that wants to go, you know, we may be heading out now. Uh, but uh, it's uh, to me it was an, an absolutely fascinating night, and I'm sure everybody enjoyed it. Show them a round of applause if you enjoyed it. <laughs> and will we have him back in tour with Anna again? Yes. yes, for sure. If he will come, won't you yes. come? Oh yeah. Okay, so thanks a million for everything, and we look forward to having you back. And thanks for everyone who came tonight. A bless. Okay. 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 Okay.